गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज प्रानेश कुमार मिश्रा वंस अगेन गाइडिंग यू ऑन टेनिजेंस पोएम द ब्रुक द ब्रुक दिस पोएम यू हैव टू रीड इन सी बी एस ई क्लास नाइन इन ए से वन यू आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ द सेम पोएम एंड फॉर द अदर पर्सन हु टेक इंटरेस्ट इन लिटरेचर एंड पोइट्री एंड ड्रामा दे कैन ऑल्सो एंजॉय this is the discussion today's discussion you will get for the betterment of your pre reading task pre reading task i repeat and then after reading to grasp the gist of this poem this video will help you a lot dear students the brook when you consult dictionary you find it a small river or a stream this is the dictionary meaning of the title taken by tennyson the brook tennyson was representative of victorian age lord alfred tennyson was one of the chief poet of victorian age he had been poet laureate over 40 years you might have watched my video on break 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 written composed by alfred lord tennyson break 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 on thy cold grey stones or see today you have the poem the brook the brook indirectly he has presented the parallelism between our life and a brook's life you will also find similarity after going through the gist of the poem that there is a certain similarity between our life and a brook's life a brook has also its origin we have also our birth and when we are young when we are in the journey we are journeying the life brook is also journeying its life and while its journey we go through several stages of life that we have discussed in seven ages written by shakespeare taken from as you like it like that brook moves through goes through several stages before it reaches to its final journey the river the big river as before our final journey is the death we get different stages in our life like the brook what are they this poem describes the journey of a stream from its place of origin i repeat to the river that it joined the poem has been written by tennyson i have told already in the form of an autobiographical way or in the way of personification the hindi term for personification is manvikaran most of the poets they use this term personification for lively expression for poet may say april april love thy girl is laughter april the month cannot life actually virtually scientifically you can say but poet is saying like that like that brook is personified here brook is considered as brook is feeling and brook is narrating all the feelings before you so the poem is written in autobiographical way in literature such a device like personification by which an inanimate object is made to appear as a living creature before us the sea came flapping by flapping its wings very the wings of the sea actually the waves are but the sea water is personified break 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 
on thy cold grey stones, O sea, Tennyson has said in his poem, Break, Break, Break. Why do you go and break against, dash against that grey, mind the colour, grey, means lifeless, not red or green, grey, cold stones, O sea. He is addressing the sea as if the sea is a human being. So relating to the topic, the brook, today I have to say that before you go through the poem, have this idea in your mind that the poem we are going to discuss is about a brook, I repeat, which dictionary meaning is a stream or a small river. The poem is about the life of a brook. The brook is personified in the poem. Actually, Tennyson has indirectly paralleled human life with the life of the brook. The poem describes the journey of a stream or the brook from its place of origin to where it joins its final journey. It merges into the river finally. Now, let me have the book to start the original poem. Just I will read 4-5 lines before you. Rest of the reading you have to do yourself. Or we will do it in the class. So it starts like this. I come from haunts other word dwellings, residence. I come from hounds of coot and heron. Heron is written here, hern. Hern or heron, same bird. A water bird. Coot is also a water bird. So the brook is saying autobiographically. I come from hounds of dwelling of house of my origin, from my origin of coot and hern. Coot and hern, I make a shadow shelly and sparkle out among the fern. Sparkle out among the fern to beaker down the valley. It shows its gem, the origin of the brook and then its gem. By thirty hills I hurry down. Or slip between the ridges by twenty tops, a little town and half a hundred breezes. The brook says that it slips from the hills and ridges and crosses twenty villages, a town and half a hundred breezes. Thus, you will see in the poem how the brook is moving and through what what places and stages the brook is moving. Once again, I would like to relate you with the gist of the poem. A child is born, as I have told that this is the parallelism used by Alfred Lake Tennyson. A child is born, the brook comes out in another way. From the horns of coot and born coot and heron or hern. The child grows in a rapid manner. The child grows in a rapid manner, infancy, childhood and then lead. The brook is also seen making a sudden sally, sudden growth. A person is young, strong, vivacious, courageous and enthusiastic during youth. The brook also hurries down, sallies, chatter and beakers in the youth, full of vigor. These highlights movement and tell about youthfulness, the movement, the daring work of the brook or as we find in our life. Men in old age at last 
are full of wisdom. They shed anger and give up quarrels. They avoid quarrels. The brook too avoids clashes, avoid making too much waste with all the obstructions it faces on its way coming before meeting the final journey, the river. It flows by them quietly and peacefully. Quietly and peacefully. Then, some other lines I would like to recite before you which always appear in the question. I chatter, chatter as I flow to join the brimming river. To join the brimming river. For man may come and man may go. Eternal lines, mind it. For man may come and man may go. But I go on forever. And here, who is I? I have told that the brook is personified here, autobiographically it is written. So I refer the brook itself. And how does it chatter? It chatters at the time when the water flows over the stony bed. So the bed of the river is not equal, not plain. Stones, bigger or smaller, are here. So kal kal karti nadiya bahati in Hindi. How the sounds, kalkal sound, the chattering sound or any type of sound is coming due to that even uneven management, natural management of the bed of the river. Thus we see in this poem that how the brook makes its journey towards its final destination that is the river. As we take birth, then we go to schooling, colleges, then a struggle starts, then climax comes, then anti-climax and the death, the final journey. The same theme is here, the same poem, The Brook, by one of the world famous poet Alfred Lord Tennyson. How nice is the poem. Once again, I repeat the word parallelism. It is a parallelism between a man's life and the brook's life. Indirectly, poet has highlighted that how we struggle before our final journey. And like that, the brook is shown here struggling. Now you have to rewind this video. You have to listen or you have to go through your books and you have to keep in your mind what was the origin of the brook how it moves and the words related with this and then its final journey was fought. If you mind this, my students, this poem will be a cup of tea for you to grasp. Thank you.